Both of these receptacles look identical, but they're actually very different. One is AFCI and the other one is GFCI. Now, while you might not be able to tell the difference just by looking at these, those two standards provide a totally different type of protection. So between these two, GFCI is the most common, so let's cover that first. So GFCI stands for ground fault circuit interrupt, and it can also be referred to as a ground fault interrupt or GFI. So if you see a difference, if you don't see GFCI, or if you hear someone talking about GFI, just know that those are the same thing and it provides the same level of protection. It's just referred to just a little bit differently. So with GFCI, it's designed to protect against a ground fault from occurring. So the way GFCI works is it has circuitry inside of it that detects how much current or how much electricity is flowing between the hot wire or the hot side and the neutral side. And if the circuitry detect, detects any type of a variance between these two values, even a very, very small one, then it's gonna shut power off to that either receptacle or the circuit, depending on how things are set up. So the advantage this gives us is it helps protect against electrocution. And probably the most common example I can think of for an electrocution scenario would be one in a bathroom. Say you drop a hairdryer into a sink or into a bathtub. Well, that's going to create a, you know, a very, very high risk of electrocution because all of that electricity is running through that body of water. And a GFCI is designed to detect this and shut power off. So there's no chance or very, very little chance of getting electrocuted. So because of this, typically you'll find GFCIs in wet locations like kitchens or bathrooms or even outside. GFCI protection can come in a couple different forms. One, you can find them in a receptacle format like this here, which is pretty typical. You'll see these in bathrooms a lot. And you can also find an installed GFCI breakers, which will protect an entire circuit. And one of the things to keep in mind too is if you have a GFCI breaker, you don't have to have GFCI receptacles in a kitchen or a bathroom. The breaker will cover the protection for the entire circuit. So you don't have to worry about having both in place. So since GFCI can also come in the form of a breaker, you might be wondering, well, what's a breaker for? Well, a breaker is designed to protect against too much current or too much amperage flowing through a specific circuit. So uh, for example, if you have a circuit that has a space heater plugged into it and maybe uh, a fan and then you plug in a vacuum cleaner to that same circuit and start vacuuming the floor. Well, it's gonna draw a lot of amperage through that circuit. And in that scenario that I just described, it's probably gonna be more than 20 or 15 amps and it's going to uh, draw too much power then that breaker is gonna detect that and it's gonna shut power off at the breaker itself. If that didn't happen, then what will occur is that wiring is gonna get really, really hot and it's gonna heat up and it can melt the insulation and it can even catch on fire. So a breaker is designed to protect too much current flowing through a specific or a certain circuit and it's designed to protect against that scenario. So now that we know the difference between GFCI and a typical standard breaker, let's throw AFCI into the mix. So AFCI stands for arc fault circuit interrupt and these are designed to detect and respond to sudden spikes of power that can occur. Now this is different than a standard breaker because a standard breaker looks for a buildup of heat. And when it sees too much heat being built up because there's too much electricity or too much current flowing through that breaker, then it's designed to trip because of that. So sudden spikes don't always set off a standard breaker, which is why you need AFCI in addition to everything else that we've already talked about. So AFCIs are designed to protect against a specific type of an arc fault situation known as a parallel arc. So a parallel arc can happen if you have, say, a neutral wire and a hot wire that are so close together that the electricity or the current can jump between the hot wire and the neutral wire, and that can cause an arcing situation. So think of this as like a stun gun, for example. You can see the electricity flowing between those two locations, and that's what can occur if you happen to have a neutral and a hot that are too close together without insulation. So typically, probably a common situation that this can happen is if there's a nail or a screw that goes uh, through some drywall and it happens to nick off the insulation of some electrical wire inside of a wall. Well, this is a really bad situation because you have a situation where there's electrical arcs occurring inside of your wall and you don't know that that's happening. And inside of your wall, there could be flammable materials and it can actually cause a house fire. Now with AFCI, you can also find them in the form of a receptacle like this one right here. This is actually an AFCI and GFCI combo. Um, and you can also find these in the form of a breaker. Now, while AFCI is great, it still doesn't protect against all types of arcing. So CAFCI stands for a combination 
arc fault circuit interrupter. And that provides protection against another type of arc fault situation known as a series arc. So with the series arc, that can occur with just the hot wire by itself. So for example, you know, we talked about the parallel arc and the electricity would jump between the hot wire and the neutral wire. Well, with a series arc, basically that means that the power can, is trying to jump or it's arcing between the hot wire and another section of the hot wire itself. So for example, if you have a, a wire that has a cut section in it, then the electricity is trying to make a connection to the other piece of, or the other uh, section of wire, then that electricity can arc, it can jump between those two sections, causing the same issue. Uh, the other scenario that's pretty common is if you have a receptacle and you have uh, the hot wire that's tightened down to a terminal, but that terminal loosens up or the connection wasn't made tight enough in the first place, you can have uh, an arcing situation inside where the wire and the terminal or the wire and the uh, light switch or the receptacle, um, it's arcing inside of the box as well. So with CFCI, it's designed to detect and react to those situations as well. So really, if you're wanting to detect and protect against all situations that are possible, uh, at least that we have the ability to uh, protect against now, you really need to have CAFCI in place to protect against an arcing situation. Now, to protect against a ground fault situation, you still have to have GFCI in place, but thankfully, you don't have to choose between whether or not you want CAFCI or AFCI or GFCI protection for a circuit. You can actually go with what they call a dual function CAFCI slash GFCI breaker. So if you want the ultimate level of protection in your home against any type of a fault or arcing situation, look for dual interrupt breakers. And if you install these in your breaker box, if your breaker box is new enough to handle these, and if you have the budget that will allow for these, uh, these will give you the highest level of protection that you can get uh, for your home. Now that we know the advantages of AFCI, let's talk about some of the disadvantages of AFCI. So first up, we now understand that there is a difference between AFCI and CAFCI. So if you're looking for that extra level of protection, you really need to go with CAFCI instead of just a normal AFCI receptacle. There are some other limitations here with standard AFCI receptacles that I won't talk about, but just know that if you're looking for CAFCI, you're only gonna be able to find those in a breaker form. The next issue is what's called nuisance tripping. So a nuisance trip is what happens when nothing is really wrong, but the breaker or the receptacle thinks that it sees something wrong. It sees some behavior that it thinks just isn't quite right, and it decides to trip the breaker, or trip the circuit in case there's an issue. Now, nuisance tripping is typically with AFCI is caused by devices that are plugged into a receptacle that are behaving a little bit oddly or a little bit differently than what the AFCI is designed to detect or think, think that it's normal. And so what will happen then is if you have devices, say, that aren't you know, uh, certified by FCC, then you can have more of a common situation where those nuisance trips are going to occur. So if you have a situation where your AFCI is tripping and you're not quite sure what's wrong, it can either be you know, doing its job and protecting you against a situation that you're not aware of that's actually a problem, say inside of a wall or something like that, or it's just tripping because you have a device that's plugged into it that's behaving a little bit differently. It's creating some additional noise that the AFC is not you know, prepared to detect or handle. And so it's playing it safe and shutting the power off. The other disadvantage and probably the biggest one is that AFCIs and CAFCIs are about 10 times the cost of a normal receptacle or a normal circuit breaker, depending on what you're going for. So with a typical receptacle, say even a commercial grade receptacle, you're going to spend like two or three dollars. And if you're looking for AFCI and GFCI protection, you're going to spend about 20 to 30 bucks. Now with breakers, on the other hand, it's probably going to be a little bit more obvious about how much more these things are because with a breaker, you're typically looking about you know, like five or six bucks, whereas with a GFCI breaker or AFCI or even CAFCI, those are going to range between probably about 50 to $70 per breaker. So this can be a significant expense, especially if you're going through uh, a remodel of your home or if you're looking at you know building a new construction home, depending on what the codes are, the electrical codes are for your area. So at this point, you might be thinking to yourself, yeah, is it really worth the extra expense for AFCI? And I'm gonna leave you with a couple of thoughts on that. So the first is I found a study that says there's about 35,000 house fires every year. And out of those house fires, if they had had AFCI protection installed, about half of those could have been prevented. 
So if you have uh, loved ones that you're caring for, if you're raising a family uh, and you have more than just yourself in your house, I think AFCI, having that protection in your home will give you that extra peace of mind that you're doing everything that you can to keep everyone safe. The other thing I want to mention is that the NEC has actually adopted AFCI as a standard. And I'm not talking about just protecting like bedrooms. I'm talking about protecting all common areas. So because of these two things, I think AFCI is worth the extra cost. And at the same time, once more and more houses start having AFCI built into them, once these things start becoming more mainstream, the cost should go down because of the supply and demand issue. All right, that's the video. Hopefully you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.